Algebra 1, 6.4c, constant term negative. So far we've learned for a polynomial in the form of x squared plus bx plus c that the c is the constant. And if the sign is a positive for the constant, then our binomial factors will have the same sign. So it'll be x plus y, x plus y, or x minus y, x minus y. The binomial factors are going to have the same sign because that's a plus. Now look at this one. Now we've got a minus for the constant. When the constant has a negative sign, our binomial factors will each have different signs. One will be a minus and the other will be a plus, or that one will be a plus and that one will be a minus. So the sign of the constant tells us if the sign of the second binomial will have the same or different sign than the first one. Okay? So take a look at this. We've got x squared plus bx plus c. So that tells us they're both going to be alike. So they could both be positive, see? Or they could both be negative, because that one says they have to be alike, depending on what the numbers are. And this has got a negative, so now they're both going to be different. And this one's got a negative and a negative. See, this one had a positive and a negative. This one's got a negative and a negative, and it says they're going to be different. So they might be different with a negative first, or they might be different with a positive first. It depends on what our factoring table tells us, okay? So we can actually see the signs in the factoring table. Look at x squared plus 5x minus 14. We start listing the products of negative 14. We get 1 and negative 14. That makes a negative 13. And negative 1 times 14 makes negative 14, but when we add them together, we get a positive 13. When we multiply a 2 and a negative 7, we get negative 14, but when we add them, we get a negative 5. We need a positive 5. How about negative 2 and a positive 7? When we add those together, we get a positive 5, so those are our numbers. And look, it's telling us which signs to use, a negative 2 and a positive 7. See? Piece of cake, right? Let's try it again. So now we've got two negatives here. Okay, we've got a negative 8x and a negative 20, and we need a product of negative 20 and a sum of a negative 8. All right? So we start listing in our factoring table all the products of a negative 20. 1 and negative 20, negative 1 and 20, a positive 2 and a negative 10, and when we add them together, 1 and negative 20 makes a negative 19. Negative 1 and 20 makes a positive 19, and look, this positive 2 times a negative 10, that gives us a negative 20, and when we add them together, we get a negative 8, just like we needed. And it tells us we have a plus 2 and a minus 10. Plus 2, minus 10. Isn't that easy? It tells us in the factoring table which sign to use, doesn't it? How about here? Now, we don't have anything. We need a sum of x, y. Well, remember our friend the invisible 1, the identity property? There's really a 1 in front of that x. So we need a product of negative 6 and a sum of a positive 1. See that? He's hiding in there, isn't he? All right, so what can we multiply together to make a negative 6? 1 and negative 6, negative 1 and 6. And when we get to negative 2 and a positive 3, when we can add these together, we know multiplying makes a negative 6, but we need to add them together to equal a positive 1, and it works. So we have a minus 2 plus 3, minus 2 plus 3. And remember, from the last video we talked about, if there's a square here and a square here, when we start writing our binomial parentheses, we automatically put an x in the front of each one because of that x squared. And if there's a y squared, we automatically put a y in the back. And then we look for the coefficients that we're going to stick in front of it by using the factoring table. Okay? So let's take a look at this just so make, to make sure you understand. So when we're doing this, we're trying to find two numbers that will have the product of that and the sum of the middle term. So what two numbers have the sum of a negative 6 and the product of a negative 7? You've got to add them together and get a negative 6, and when you multiply them, you get a negative 7. It's negative 7 and 1. Negative 7 plus a 1 is a negative 6, and negative 7 times 1 is negative 7, so that works. The sum of 2 and the product of negative 8. What times what equals negative 8? We could do a 4 and a negative 2. That'll get us a positive 2 and a negative 8, see? 
So it's these two numbers would fit both of those. See, the sum of negative 1 and the product of negative 2. Well, we could do negative 2 and 1. When we multiply these, we get a negative 2. And when we add them, we get a negative 1. What if it's the sum of 7 and the product of 12? 3 and 4. 3 plus 4 is 7. 3 times 4 is 12. See? So remember, the sign of the constant, that third term in a trinomial, tells us if the sign for the binomial factors are alike or different. But if you use a factoring table, that'll also tell you, won't it? In our next video, we're going to be factoring a trinomial in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. And there's going to be links to modeling trinomial squares and factoring trinomial squares and constant term positive. We did that. And those are all going to be in the description of this video. Okay? So there'll be links for you to just click on and go right to them. All right? And give you a good review. So that's constant term negative. I'll see you next video. Hope this was helpful. Bye.